Salutations, chum raids. I'm sure you all know the drill by now, as I'm sure you're aware having looked at the title and thumbnail. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Night Shield. However, I must apologize for the slight clickbait on my part, as I never actually bought the BX03 starter, and instead got the BX06 booster of Night Shield in this blue color. The parts are exactly the same, so going forward, just pretend it's green if you like. But before we get into the review, this video is a part of a series, so if you want to see more videos like this one, click the card in the top right to see my other Beyblade X reviews. And if you end up enjoying what you see, feel free to subscribe with bell notifications on to stay up to date with any of my future uploads. Well with that nonsense out of the way, let's dissect what makes Night Shield so daunting to come up against. As I mentioned in the introduction, I bought the booster, not the starter set. The only major differences being the blade comes in a cool blue colour and that there is no launcher included, which worked out better for me as I already have three from the other starters, for now. The packaging also reflects this change, not displaying a launcher on the box and it being smaller, not needing the extra room to accommodate it. Taking a look at the back of the box, it has a list of statistics to give you a brief understanding on what are the pros and cons of the parts included. Another difference is that there is no portrait of the character that uses the bay in the show. Instead, it is replaced by a diagram I can't understand, as I can't read Japanese. Sumimasen Nihonjin. This booster also comes with instructions. As with the starters, this booster's main focus is the three parts of the bay. The first being the blade, Night Shield. Overall, I would say Night Shield is fairly balanced. It has a three-bladed design with these gaps to give it better outward weight distribution and therefore stamina. While comparatively small, its contact points do generate enough recoil to be used in an anti-attack balance combo, and as a defense-oriented blade, you can expect this thing will be able to shrug off heavy hits with relative ease, in theory. Next is 380. Similar to its pointier cousin, 480, it has greater burst resistance to make up for its more exposed contact points, and, in theory, is a safer option, having less contact points while still having the added height and burst resistance. As the case with all taller ratchets, it's more susceptible to toppling over and becoming destabilized, so take careful consideration when choosing this part. If its strength overweighs its weakness. And finally, the bit. Needle. Side note, pretend this is the right colour, I can't find my original needle. As the name implies, this bit ends in a fine point, and, similar to ball, doesn't have the best burst resistance. Due to its low friction, it's capable of some pretty impressive spin times, provided it doesn't get destabilised. But this low friction could also be one of its greatest weaknesses, meaning it makes any bay it's on a sitting duck waiting for an extreme finish. That's why it would be best used on defensive or stationary attack combos, able to counterattack anything foolish enough to charge in head first. Pushing on over to the scales, the Night Shield Blade clocks in at a reasonable 32.66 grams, making it about a gram heavier than the previous Wizard Arrow, and roughly on par with Hell's Scythe. Next up is the Ratchet, 380, coming in at 6.94 grams on par with most other 80mm ratchets. And last but not least, the needle bit, weighing exactly 2.01 grams, roughly the same as all other bits, excluding metal needle. Taking the parts for assembly, the process is the same with all other X-Series bays. The ratchet twists into place underneath the blade, and the bit slots into the hole in the center of the ratchet. Returning our fully assembled bay over to the scales, the full combo weighs 41.61 grams, which is about average in terms of bay weights. Taking everything mentioned so far into consideration, in theory, Night Shield should be the Beyblade equivalent of a brick wall, shrugging off attack types and counterattacking. though I do think it will struggle if destabilized on its sharp tip and lose a great deal of stamina. The needle bit, in my opinion, is also less reliable than ball, and because of this, will likely be a fish in a barrel to any stamina type it faces. Now, with all that said, let's move over to the stadium and put our theories into practice with some testing. Mm -hmm. 
Let's see how the bay performs in isolation with some test launches. Firstly, a flat light launch to get us started and... Oh dear. What is that noise? Let's... Let's try that again. Ah. This leads us into another lesson here. Always remember to balance tune your bays before a match. Balance tuning is where you alter the balance of your bay by orientating your parts differently. This was more something you'd need to consider in burst than in X, but let's see the difference that it made. Night Shield is slightly more steady, but still ends up falling over and scraping, but that looks like the best we're going to get at low speeds. Next is a hard, flat launch. Circling the inner ring of the stadium before sticking to the center while wobbling a bit. Hopefully this will be to its benefit and destabilize its opponent, but we can only wait and see. And finally, a hard, banked launch. Knight moves aggressively for a few seconds before returning to its standard movement pattern we saw before, albeit maybe slightly more steady than last time. Getting into the test battles, its first opponent is the attack type Dran Dagger, which Knight should have an advantage against. Round 1 begins with a solid hit from Dran Dagger. Knight recovers and is almost sent into the extreme zone. It counterattacks and doesn't have quite enough force to do the same to Dran, becoming destabilized and tapped over topside, awarding one point to a spin out finish. Not a great start, but we'll see if we can pick up some points in the second round. It's still anyone's game. Round 2, like Deja Vu, big hits from Dran Dagger and Knight has lost its bit awarding two points for a burst finish. Don't think Knight can salvage this, with only one point until match end. Round three begins with Knight moving on the aggressive, but Dran takes to the extreme line, landing a direct hit and winning the match with an extreme finish. I have no idea how Knight didn't earn a single point. Well, next up in our series of test battles is one Knight should have neither an advantage nor disadvantage to the balance type Unicorn Sting. Round 1. Bad start. Two points to Unicorn Sting for a ring out finish. This bay is getting slaughtered. Coming up in round 2, Unicorn misses an extreme dash and nearly self KOs. Returning to the extreme line, Knight shrugging off a hit and counter attacking. Finally seeing needle work as intended. With most of its stamina expended and destabilized by Knight's blows, Knight Shield earns one point to a spin-out finish. Just like Dare, it's coming up. The next round starts with Knight and Unicorn trading indirect hits, before again Unicorn hitting Knight with an extreme dash. Knight is able to recover, but Unicorn ends up once again using up most of its stamina, trying to use the rail, winning Knight another point. I think I'm starting to see where this match is going. Round 4 begins with both bays moving aggressively, and Unicorn again using up too much spin on the extreme line and is unable to knock Knight into the extreme or over zone, eventually resulting in yet another spin out finish. Let's wrap up this match in round 5. Score is 3 to 2. Unicorn again rides the extreme line, a miss and a direct hit. Not enough for an extreme finish, but destabilized Knight to the point it toppled over and ejected its ratchet, scoring two points to Unicorn Sting for a burst finish. With how these matches have gone so far, I have an inkling of what to expect for the final match. At long last, a bay that Knight should have a disadvantage against. The stamina type, Wyvern Gale. This is also its stock combo, but I'm not paying extra for the green one if I have the parts already. Round 1. Knight and Wyvern trade glancing blows until Knight is destabilized and knocked over. One point. Round 2. Knight begins by moving aggressively around the outer ring. Knight and Wyvern trade direct hits slowly, wearing each other down until Needle topples over due to Gear Ball's superior stamina. One point. Round 3. Big hit from Wyvern. Then they dance. A barrage of small attacks from Knight chip away at its own stamina more so than Wyvern, and it ends up toppling over. One point. And finally, in round four, Knight moves a little too aggressively and uses up all of its stamina, awarding the final point to... Wyvern, winning the match. To summarize, 
You thought we were done? No, rematch time. Swapping out point for gear ball and pitting Knight against its first opponent. Knight, immediately more stable and aggressive, punishes Dran for thinking it can use the extreme line, instantly bursting it. You thought Knight Shield was bad? Think again. I don't like its stock combo, but put it on a lower height ratchet with either Taper, Disc, Gear Ball, Orb, or Hexa, and you have a menace, shedding its defense type skin to become a monstrous balance type combo. To conclude, if you're going to use the point bit, put it on Shark Edge or Dran Sword for a stationary attack combo. Some people like it, but truthfully, I don't. If you can make it work for defense, please prove me wrong in the comments. But as it stands, it's not my cup of tea. Knight Shield is an excellent blade, unfortunately held back by its stock combo. Slap some parts on it from other bays, or nab it in the 3 on 3 deck set, or the Dran Dagger set, and I promise you, it will serve you well. Anyway, thanks for watching, if you still are. This video is for anyone who thinks I only upload battles that makes the bay look good. Nope, one take wonder I am. If you like this video, there's more like it in the playlist on screen. Anyway, that's it from me. Milgo signing off. Peace.